Greetings and welcome to this month's In the Community special. I'm Jennifer Beck. Hopefully you've seen the TV show Life Questions. And if you watch that show on a regular basis, then this month's guest will be no stranger to you. Ryan Benroth is the founder of The Well Apostolic Center. If you've ever felt like you are living in a rut, the truth is God doesn't want you to stay there. Today, Ryan and I discuss how to stand on the Word of God and break free from things that may be holding you back from God's plan for your life. Well, you've seen him on Life Questions quite a few times. I'm happy to have Ryan Benroth here from the Well Apostolic Center. Ryan, thank you for being here today Thanks with for us. Me. Uh, before we start talking about specific things, let's first talk about the Well mm -hmm. Apostolic Center. What is it? What do you do? That's something yeah. we never really talk about on Life Questions. Right. <laughs> um, we don't have a chance to talk about that. Yeah. So share with, with us what that is. Yeah. I mean, it's a church in a sense. I purposely named it a little different because. Uh, out of Ephesians 4, you know, God has, Jesus has given, div divided himself up as apostles, prophets, evangelists, uh, teachers, pastors for the equipping of the saints for ministry. So I believe in uh, an apostolic center, there's a, an aspect of equipping and sending that happens. I mean, I think we see that first in the Church of Antioch, you know, mm. Paul's hanging out there for several years and then he gets sent into his ministry. So uh, our, we typically we think of church as like, okay, let's gather people here and let's keep them in, and mm. grow. And, but there's actually a sending aspect that as you, you grow people, they go mm. and do their own thing potentially. So um, it's really a focus on training, equipping people in areas of ministry so they can be a blessing to the world. So your website has a lot of interesting things on it, including um, courses mm -hmm. that can be taken. Um, you have your own gathering that, yeah. that meets every single Sunday. Tell us a little bit about basically your, I hate to call it services, right. but what you <laughs> kind of offer. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're uh, probably a little bit out of the norm, I guess, in terms of uh, we, it's not likely a set uh, script thing was like, well, we have worship here, we have prayer time, we have offering, we have message, and 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 it's sometimes we have all worship, sometimes we start with a message, and because that's going to direct our worship and prayer, we have prophecy and uh, sharing throughout the time, and so it's not not everything's coming from me. We got lots lots of people that are growing in that, and so they're sharing what they're hearing and seeing uh, from the Lord and in the Spirit and uh, encouraging each other in that way. And, you know, we have healing going on, too. Mm -hmm. We just want to see all of the, the gifts of Spirit uh, expressed through the body. Can you say that you've seen some amazing things happen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, I've had, we've had done healing services in Lima also, and uh, there's, we've had just some pretty amazing times with that and seeing people uh, miraculously healed of things that they've um, been dealing with for a long time. Uh, doctors weren't fixing and mm. uh, I mean, people getting freed of demonic spirits and uh, that's all what Jesus came to do. And so we're gonna keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said a word that I think is so key and that's free, freedom. Yeah. And uh, he's got a website, um, there's a Facebook page. You can see everything right on the screen so that you can get more information about where you can find Ryan. But let's go ahead and talk about that. I think freedom, freedom is such a key. And I personally feel like there's so many people and many Christians as well who don't break free from the chains yeah. um, because they don't go to the root. Right. They don't go to the root cause. So just start by sharing your thoughts on, on that. Because I know as I looked through your website and, and watched your Facebook page and saw some of the things, I feel like that's really a, a key to it is you've got to get to the root of the problem. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, you know, if people receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior and it's like, well, everything's going to be fantastic now, <laughs> but there is a working out of your faith that is necessary in it because he's made you new, but he's also renewing you. So there's a process we get to engage in. And so getting free is really for Christians. 
Um, makes me think of when Jesus had the Syrophoenician woman come and he wanted his daughter, or her daughter, delivered of a demonic spirit. He's like, well, it's not right for me to give the children's bread to the dogs. Like, because he came for the Jews, right? Then they were the children of God. Now, after his death and resurrection, ascension, that expands. So now it's available to all the children of God. So who, who come to him get grafted in your ch child of God now too. So the freedom that we get, we can get in Christ is maintained uh, because we have him in us. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's like he's the strong man that is going to overpower any spirit that's been oppressing us. And so we, I think we tend to think that, well, that's just automatically going to happen when Jesus comes into our life. But that's not really the way it works. So, you know, there's many places in Scripture where it's talked about that. Uh, or, it, for instance, Paul says, don't give the enemy a foothold. Mm -hmm. well, well, we can still be a Christian and give spirits a place mm -hmm. of influence mm -hmm. in our lives. Right. Or from our past, we, especially in terms of, you know, unhealed trauma, mo very often people that have unhealed trauma have some spiritual attachments to mm -hmm. that. That's a place of influence, that's a foothold. It doesn't mean that you're you're possessed or owned or, you know, yeah. but it's just, you've got some influence that's not of God and, and we gotta work through that. And like you said, get to the root. If the root is trauma, we can't avoid that forever. We gotta actually get that healed so that we can experience the freedom that God has for us. So what what does that healing look like in many cases? Yeah. You know, some people just want to say a prayer, they want right. to take a pill, they want to and, and I'm not I'm not <clears throat> saying any of those things are bad, but in the end, we have to get to the root and we have to get rid of that stronghold. Yeah. Uh, that cause otherwise it's going to keep coming. It's going to keep holding on. Yeah. Yeah, for me, in the process I take people through, and it's like, well, you're, we're going to open up about those things. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Not like, not necessarily that we have to go into every nitty-gritty detail, because that's not fun, and it's not necessary uh, for, for the most part. But, but we do need to know enough in order to profess forgiveness for the right things. I find that the more specific you can be for, in your forgiveness, then the more you're opening up that area of your heart for healing. Uh, you know, in James 5, it says, uh, confess your sins to one another so that you'll be healed. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. sometimes people get all stuck up on that. It's like, well, I don't need to confess my sins to anybody. God's forgiven me. Well, yeah, I 100% agree with that. But it's really for your healing, not for... Uh, salvation, you know, or forgiveness. So it's like you, this aspect of opening your heart to somebody with the, in the, that hurt, it, you know, it gives God access to those two. So like if most of the time, if you're not willing to open up your heart to other mm -hmm. people, like you've got a wall there, whatever wall you built to people, you likely mm -hmm. also built to God. So opening up your heart to those things. And now ideally that is with somebody that knows what they're going to do with that area of your heart. <laughs> like, this is not where you want to flippantly be giving people her areas of heart and they don't know what to do with it. So that's where I think it's important to equip the, the body of Christ like, uh, so that when somebody trusts you enough with that area of your heart, you can lead them mm -hmm. into the healing and freedom that they desire. You know, I think that it's possible for people to live their lives with I guess what I'll call kind of a stony heart mm -hmm. for a really long time and not realize it because we live in a society that uh, explains things away or or even makes it okay. You, you, you can have a grudge against that person because they did yeah. that to you. And so that's you have a right to feel right. that way. But yet f what you're doing to yourself is even more self-destructive. Yeah, in the absolutely. End. Yeah. yeah, we have you know, kind of a culture of offense where it's like, well, if they, <laughs> I didn't like what they said or it's like, well, we're going to get all offended about it and <laughs> cancel and cancel culture is not from the mm. kingdom of heaven uh, because it's birthed out of offense and unforgiveness. And that's that's not God's heart. So can we even call it a spirit of offense? I, yeah, absolutely. You know, and when we know we're dealing with spirits, it's yeah. a whole nother realm, in my opinion, yeah. because you can't just fight that with a little. I don't know. You got to take yeah. a, a, a biblical sword to that type of thing yeah. and cut that out. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, so that, and that's part of the healing process too. It's like, well, you're bringing that out, you're forgiving. You know, I help people walk through that process of forgiveness and identifying those areas where we need to forgive. And, uh, you know, also then, like you said, bringing the sword, there's an aspect of renouncing and saying, uh, I've renounced, I cut off and that influence of the enemy. So if it's in a spirit of offense or a spirit of trauma, it's like, you know, I'm taking my authority in Christ, I'm cutting that off, and then that's got to go. So, uh, you know, commanding those spirits to leave is then kind of another part of it too. Certainly filling with what God has for us and his spirit is the the kind of culmination of it and in, in terms of the healing and freedom but th that doesn't mean there's there's still a walking out and renewing of your mind mm. perhaps that needs to take place after that but yeah that's generally the process well and i've heard people talk about the fact that sometimes it's easier to remain in in the in the chains in a sense yeah. i'm just going to call it chains but they're going it's easier to remain in that little world instead of doing the work to break three but, yeah. but the freedom is so worth it to oh get absolutely there. Yeah. yeah uh most of the time i i say this pretty often but most of the time people don't realize what's available to them mm -hmm. until they've experienced it yeah so it's yeah. like, <laughs> because that's been their norm for so mm. long. It's like, well, this is just what life is. Well, you go through a process of healing and deliverance, then it's like, wow, I didn't <laughs> even know this was available. I didn't know I could have this kind of peace. I didn't know I could have this kind of joy. And if you don't take on those things, then you don't actually get to the promise. So it's like... Um, you know, it's like uh, the Israelites going in the promised land. You know, Jesus has promised, he's put these promises out here. It's like, I heal the brokenhearted, I set the captives free, release the prisoners. And so like, that's a promise. But then there's this giant, these giants in the way mm -hmm. of things that we don't want to deal with. Well, you're going to have to take on the giants in order to enter in the promised land. So it's either wander around in the wilderness and not actually experience what Jesus uh, bought and paid for for you. Mm. Or you go back to Egypt, be a slave. <laughs> Neither one's a great option. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's just take on the giants with people that we trust and experience the freedom that God has for us. We are talking, I'm talking with Ryan Benroff with the Well Apostolic Center. Website is on the screen screen and you can get more information also on his Facebook page. Ryan, you keep quoting scripture and I love that because that means that everything you're doing is entrenched in the word of God. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't want to wander off into areas that um, are kind of speculative uh, for the most part. I mean, obviously, you know, the king, Jesus preaching the kingdom of heaven, like there's an aspect that he even told his disciples, like, there's so much more that I want to tell you, but I can't right now, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. send your Holy Spirit. So there's there are things to discover, um, but you know, generally speaking, in terms of ministry of healing and freedom, he's given us the tools, uh, you know, the scriptural uh, tools of forgiveness, praying for people, commanding spirits to leave. You know, renewing of our mind, uh, getting rid of lies. Jesus mm. said, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. And I mean, that's another area. It's not just woundedness that keeps people bound. It's actually believing lies is also mm. something that, that keeps people bound too. We are out of time. Sorry, we can't talk about that more, but yeah. you can learn more about that. Like I said, Ryan's got a website. Um, he has a church. He has a ministry, all kinds of things. I'm sure that people can contact you and you'd yep. be happy to yeah, talk with them. Go through the Facebook page. Or it would probably be one of the best ways. All right. And yeah. if you can't find him, you just need to contact us and I'll make sure that you get connected with him. Yep. All right. Ryan Benroff of the Well Apostolic Center. Thanks, for much. Thanks Thank you so, so much for joining us. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. One more time, that website is healingwellministry.org. You can also find Ryan on Facebook at The Well Apostolic Center. Now on to our next feature for this month. If you've ever encountered Pastor Neil Whitney, then you have experienced wonderful biblical encouragement. But what about meeting Pastor Neil Whitney head to head on the ice rink with a hockey stick in hand? Think about your passions, your hobbies, 
What brings joy to your heart? Could God be giving you those passions to use for His glory? Pastor Neil and I talk about using hobbies for ministry. Pastor Neil Whitney of the church at Allentown. So many people in this area know you for your heart in the church and for the community. But you are wearing a hockey jersey today, which maybe not so many people realize is a huge part of your life as well. Tell me about what, tell me about the jersey, tell me about your life with hockey. And I think you brought, you even have a stick, don't you? Yep, I brought some paraphernalia. All right. <laughs> I've ice skated since I was a little kid out on the 40 acre pond north of St. Mary's. It was a family thing to do every Sunday afternoon. And the kids played hockey and the men played hockey and it just lasted all day, pre-TV days. And it wasn't too long, I got my teenagers, they moved me from the kids to the men's because I was getting better at doing that. And uh, then in 1964, we built an ice rink here in Lima. And so that's the first time I ever skated indoors. And uh, at first, to be truthful, I was kind of obsessed with the idea. Mm. I hate to admit that, but when I look back on it, it got to be an obsession. Played a lot for 11 years. Uh, played in the league, traveled three or four states around here, and played in big cities on the weekends. And it was really, it was amateur, but it was fun. We had crowds. and. Just really, really enjoyed it and made a lot of friends doing that. And, but then I got to a point where I couldn't do that anymore. In ice hockey, you're really young when you're not able to play anymore. <laughs> so then I started playing hockey for fun. And the rink here lasted 10 years, so that we ended up in Finley in 1975. And we actually had a team there that traveled for three years. And then that went away. And then we started a, what they used to call an industrial league or a men's league in Finley. And Finley's the only rink really in Northwest Ohio to get mm -hmm. to Toledo. Bowling Green has one too. But the Finley Cube draws a lot, a lot of people from all of Northwest Ohio, even from Toledo, because we have a really good league there. 300, more than 300 people play in it. And I realized one day that I needed to quit being not so nice on the ice <laughs> because, <laughs> because I wasn't so nice on the ice. A lot of people really didn't like me on the ice. It's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde problem. Mm. And my wife reminded me if uh, you're going to be light, then you need to be light on the ice too. But wait, isn't it okay to be mean on the ice? That's just accepted. I mean, hockey, it's, it's ice hockey. <laughs> It's not okay when you're playing for fun and people have to get up and go to work mm. the next day. Or maybe when you're playing for God. That's all right. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true too. So uh, I just recognized at that time that I was being a bad witness off and on. It wasn't horrible, but off and on I was being a bad witness. And so I prayed and said, God, just help me with this. Uh, when you do something for 15 or 20 years one way, it's hard to break that. Ah. So I had to practice some of my own behavior modification teaching that I do a lot in discipleship mm -hmm. and uh, work on myself. So, and gradually I got better. It wasn't overnight, but gradually I got better. And, and that opened the doors to, instead of people being aggravated at me, I became more compassionate about everything. And it, it, it like if you lift Jesus up, the Holy Spirit would draw people to God. And that's what happened. Uh, since then, I've done a lot of, uh, officiated a lot of weddings for hockey players that don't have churches. I've done a lot of funerals, a lot of counseling, a lot of grief counseling, a lot of marriage counseling. Uh, I'm not really a counselor. I, I just give people spiritual direction mm. uh, based on what the Bible says. I, I try to bring the light to them. Right. And then I got to, when I got to be 60, I have heard that they have tournaments in bigger cities for people my age. Okay, now hold on. Guys, you got to realize this is when he was 60. He's still playing. <laughs> this started when he was very little. Ice hockey is still playing. How many of you can think about something that's been in your life solidly this long? God obviously gave it to you, working you through it. And then at 60, you started in this next league. Right. I still play around here, but on the weekends they have tournaments for 
It's actually now it's 40 and over, 50 and over, 60 and over, 70 and over. They just started 75 and over, which I qualify for now. So, uh, so I, I started, I went to Tampa for the first tournament when I was 60 and just played on a pickup team. So that was a, a great experience. And then I realized that, oh my goodness, I could do the same thing in Tampa that I can do in Findlay or Bowling Green or Fort Wayne where I play and connect with people uh, that have needs in their life, that spiritual needs. And it's just totally amazing how God opens doors. It's almost like if you walk up to the door, it's almost like God opens the door then. If you make yourself available, then God opens the door. So you've taken your hobby, a love, a passion, something that you admit was once an obsession, but God worked right. with you, allowed you to keep that. Sometimes we have to remove obsessions from our life. That's, that's right. But God allowed that to, to stay in your life as you reworked that because he probably knew what was going to, well, he did, he did know, did know what was going to be coming. So you've taken something, you could just play hockey for fun. You could just say it's, it's my release, it's my exercise, which we all need, that's really important, we all need to have that. And you could just say, that's it, this is my, I get away from church, I get away from it. But no, you've instead allowed God to use that differently. How, when did you sense that was happening, that hockey wasn't just hockey for you, it was, it was an extension of your ministry? Probably when God got a hold of me and showed me I didn't need to be light on the ice. <laughs> I've never said that before. <laughs> That's when it happened. I, I, I mean, I did some things I'm like totally not proud of, but what the tipping point was, a friend of mine one time was on another team and something happened in front of the net, so I just kind of punched him in the face. And, uh, and he said, I thought you were a pastor. Wow. And my response was, if you want to hear our message, then you should come to church. This is a hockey game. And when I said that, the Holy Spirit just said, Neil, mm -hmm. that was so far off base. Wow. So far off base. Yeah. It's just so far off base. I'm one person. I'm supposed to be Jesus no matter where I am. And I sent him an apology note the next day. I apologized right away. And I apologized to him in the mail. And I apologized to him about 14 times after that. Because mm. the Holy Spirit really convicted me on that. And it was like when that happened, it, just the light came on. Mm. Your light on the ice. I like that phrase. Mm. And, and then when I started playing on the road in, in the different cities and meeting different people, it was like, oh, my goodness. It's not about the hockey game. It's about connecting with people, and then it's about after the game, going to the restaurant, eating, uh, going to Grand Ole Opry, you know, if you happen to be in Nashville, or wherever you might be, people like to go places. How do you sense those opportunities? Since you go to these events, and as I'm thinking about, we all have hobbies, and we all can use those hobbies for God. So how do you sense that? You're there to play a hockey game. Obviously, you have to do that, but then, other opportunities arise and are you are you just always peaked for them or asking you know God who who am I supposed to connect with how does it happen well the teams that I play for regularly they all know I'm a pastor but like I played in Nashville a while back and on a team I never played for before so before the first game everybody's getting dressed I just went around the locker room and gave them all my card and and so that's like you're a pastor and you're playing hockey. <laughs> yeah, why not? You know, it's different. So I really let people know I am a pastor. And I say to them, if you need a hockey player, I'm available. If you need to get in touch with God, you can call me about that too. Hmm. Or email me or text me, whatever you want to do. So that opens the door. Uh, it also changes the climate in the dressing room hmm. subconsciously. It's really important that people know what we stand for and what we believe. Mm -hmm. Really important. So I get uh, people usually ask me, you know, like, hey, what are you doing tonight for dinner? You got time tomorrow morning? Just mo a lot of it comes off of the cards. But before I did that, before I passed the cards out, uh, 
people would still just come to me. Didn't even know I was a pastor. And really, it's actually, for me, it's probably a good thing they didn't know I was a pastor because pastors are just people. And we're not any different or any more special than anybody else. We're all equal in God's kingdom. But I think it's that light thing. If you lift Jesus up and you don't have to talk about Jesus, you just need to, to portray the image of Christ. And people that are having challenges and struggles in their life, it just seems like they're attracted to that image of Christ. Well, as we end this, come bring this interview to an end, I, a few takeaways I think about, because from a practical standpoint, we're not all playing hockey, but we all have hobbies in life, and right. God has placed those passions in our life, knowing that we can u be used for Him. Right. So first of all, if it becomes an obsession, trust that God can turn it around to be what He wants. Give it back to Him, right. and He will give it back to us in the right way. I had to say that I would quit playing hockey if it was necessary mm. for that to, to overcome that. I had to be willing to sacrifice the whole deal. And then and, God left me keep it. And look at that. And then in that time, you saw opportunities right. to form relationships. And, and you talk about being a pastor. So then people are saying, oh, that's a pastor. Well, I, I'm not a pastor. And you at home are, may not be a pastor, but yet God can still use each one of mm -hmm. us that's right. in that way. So always be looking for those relationship opportunities. Yeah. Paul said, meet people where they are. So I do that a lot of times. Situations sometimes make me uncomfortable with the environment, with the language. But you just have to overcome that and know that God has a greater call. God has a greater call, and I think that's where we'll close for today. Thank you so much, Neil, for, Thank the, you. for the incredible words of wisdom, practical advice that we can take with us and be the hands and feet of Jesus Amen. wherever we are Amen. at any moment. Amen. All right. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And that wraps it up for this month's edition of In the Community. This monthly TV special is just one of the many things made possible due to your financial partnership. We're a local Christian station, and that sets us apart from all of the national Christian stations. If I see you at the grocery store, we can have a chat. We're real people working alongside each other, you and me, our, work, our people here and you right there in your own home. We're working together to spread the message of Jesus Christ to all ages in this region. Our Spring to Life funding campaign continues all month. Would you give a donation? You can do so online at WTLW.com forward slash donate or call us at 419-339-4444. I leave you now with this scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will guide your paths. That's one of my life verses that I wanted to share with you. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching this edition of In the Community right here on TV 44.